Hey guys, so today we just did uh, round five, and uh, yesterday we had a free day. Free day, yep. Where, well, first of all, Eugene, you went on a hike. Yeah, my buddy John Bartholomew and I went on a really nice hike to the th uh, Geothermal River, and believe it or not, in this uh, freezing <laughs> cold, we actually swim. And uh, if you guys want to see, we made a YouTube video uh, from the river. Mm -hmm. And Kostya is going to link it into into this video so you guys can check it out. Yeah, for like the 20 people that know my channel, right. but not John's <laughs> channel. <laughs> we'll link John Bartholomew's channel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, so I played in the Fisher Random event um, because it was, uh, it would have been Bobby Fisher's, I think, 70th birthday or 75. 75, I think, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was won by all the American players, which was very interesting because it was a European championship. But uh, shout out to Alex Lunderman. He represented with first. Alshon Muradiabadi, who I'm playing tomorrow. He got oh, second. you're playing him? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Josh Friedel got third, so they represented the U.S. And then Richard Rappert got fourth. And, uh, well, he got the European championship. <laughs> um, but all right, I guess we're going to start with uh, my game today because it was a pretty quick one. Okay. And I was playing a French guy here, Christian Vallette, who's mm -hmm. about 2,000. Okay, I chose this uh, Knight BD7 line in the King's Indian, so I could avoid any kind of uh, exchange variation. Yeah, any any kind of simplification. D takes E5. Mm -hmm. Right, because now whenever he takes on E5, I take with the pawn, and we keep the yeah, queens you, on the board. Yeah, you keep the queens. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I played H6, and the idea here is to go uh, Knight H7. Uh -huh, and Knight G5, and to try to force him to... Yeah, exactly. Figure out what to do with that d4 pawn. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, he tri we tried off this knight, and then, um, yeah, he has an issue with the d4 pawn, and then I try to get my other knight to e6. Ah, nice. Uh -huh. So I picked up this idea from uh, Movsesian. He played mm -hmm. it in a couple of games. And, uh, well, if you guys want more detail in the opening, you know the drill. I have a Patreon page, and you can check it out for very detailed opening analysis on all my games. Uh, link in description. Okay, he played b3. So just like we predicted. <laughs> right. This guy is just going to play his normal setup. He doesn't care about any prep. Yeah. He just doesn't want to play uh, d5 and close the center. So he's keeping everything flexible. Um, but okay. I played basically normal. Yeah. Normal moves. Knight mm -hmm. h7. And then here he finally takes on e5. Right. With the pawn. Mm -hmm. um, I also considered knight takes. But again, that allows some simplification. Yeah. I figure this position... I mean... It's a good version, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know, he just plays maybe g3. Yeah, and then he can trade those bishops and somehow... Yeah, knight a4. He, he's happy with the draw, right? <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. So I just took uh, de5, knight a4, uh -huh. play knight g5, Yep. and uh, he plays c5. I I'm not sure if he's playing it so well, but... Right, the knight is a little bit misplaced on a4 now, but okay. Yeah. So I played uh, queen f6, mm -hmm. kind of forcing him to take. Yep. And then things actually go wrong here very quickly. He plays this move rook e3. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured the idea is to play bishop c4 and uh, rook f3. Aha, uh -huh, target f7, yep. But I, I did some calculation here, and I, I'm I'm actually in time to meet this very comfortably. With knight of eight, knight e six plan. Yeah, That's, exactly. Guys, the standard plan in Kings Indians: knights come into e six and d four or f four. In fact, I probably learned this from some of your videos on chess.com when you covered. Yeah, like, yeah, knight I, I, I did this course many years ago on chess.com. I covered every possible uh, knight a six uh, video, including structures similar to this, where knights come into e six and d four and you know, very easy position to play. Yeah, just as easy when you know the ideas. Right. That's why Fisher <laughs> Random is so hard. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So he plays... Um, bishop c4. Bishop c4. Knight e6. Knight e6. And so I had to be precise here with the calculation, because after rook f3, uh -huh. uh, my idea was to play knight f4. Uh-huh. And, of course, I'm putting myself in a pin, and g3 is kind of the main... Uh, main idea. The main issue. Uh-huh. Um, now, for a while, this wasn't working for me because g3, g4 mm -hmm. is a huge blunder. Rook takes f4. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just game over. Yep. Um, and bishop g4 is similarly not working um, because I think he can uh, take here. Uh-huh. And then bishop d1, rook f6. Exactly. And he's getting uh, two pieces for the rook. Yeah, and then white could be better here. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, so 
I need to be careful, and if I give the check on h3, then he gets out, and then right. f7 is still hanging. Yep. Um, but I figured out I'm going to have this intermezzo rook d8. Oh, that's very important, guys. Intermezzo moves. Very difficult in chess. Yeah, without this, the, the whole line doesn't work for black, and the point is we're hitting the queen. Once mm -hmm. the queen moves, the rook is just unprotected, right. and bishop g4 bishop works. Bishop g4 or g4, yeah. I mean, yeah, bishop g4. Yeah, you. only bishop g4. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what he plays. Any queen move, bishop g4. Uh, uh, and then this is yeah, just very awkward busted. for white. Yeah. Um, so around here, I, I think he, I think this was his idea, but he mm -hmm. kind of realized this move is uh, not working for him. Uh, and he blunders with queen to d6. So this is a great puzzle. It's black to play mm -hmm. and uh, find a winning move. And uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to pause the video and look for it. And... Um, yeah, I was ready to make this move, and I was very happy to play b5. b5, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's always nice when you have on passant tricks. They're very, very cute. Um, but now the point is, of course, he cannot take on passant because the queen is hanging. Yep. And if he throws in the queen trade, well... Then he can't do on passant anymore. It's too late, yeah. <laughs> too late. It'd be funny if chess base allowed me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, so this end game, I'm basically just uh, just winning a piece. Uh, so I think he played... So he resigned or he played him? You know, I actually thought he would, but he played g3. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the move order here is precise, because if I give this check first... Mm -hmm. Then f7 will be hanging. Okay. Exactly. Queen takes d6, yeah. he takes on f7. This game is all about intermezzos. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, actually. This is um, yeah a lot of important details. Yeah, so you got to take first. He has to take with a pawn. Now yeah. check, and you take the bishop. And that's game over. Yeah, so here, okay, I thought he'd resign. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't resign? No, he, he took here, he played on, but... Uh -huh. I mean, basically, the his idea was to kind of create some kind of bind. Yeah, but it, even if he does, who cares? You're just going to win on the B-file. Yeah, eventually I get yeah. out somehow. The, yeah, this is resignable. Position. What I chose was basically to just... Um, just bring in my knight. Yep. And then once I got my knight here, I can play yeah, here. Yeah, no, this is just extra. Piece. It was over. So if you guys want to see the rest of the game, you can check it out. I think it ended with mate. Yep. But <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't play on too long, just until like the time control, and then that was it. All right. Okay, so Eugene, you played a much stronger opponent. Yes. Uh, I played this... Uh, she's WGM, right? From mm -hmm. Ukraine, uh, Delohanova. And she's a very dangerous opponent, because the round earlier, she actually beat... Uh, Gladura, the mm -hmm. super strong 2600 plus GM right. with white. So yeah. she's getting second white in a row. And I came in prepared, guys. And I'm going to show you a really cool idea, more or less novelty in move three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so e4, e5, it all starts out as a pretty normal Roy Lopez. And here I probably shocked my opponent with this move, bishop b4. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very rare move. I don't even know the name of it. I don't think it has a name, but Magnus Carlsen has toyed around with this move in Blitz. Right. And uh, I kind of, you know, picked it up from him because I played Magnus. I learned from the best. <laughs> and this worked like a charm. If you want to learn more about this move and more analysis, I will provide you with more information on my website, uh, chessopeningsexplained.com, where you can find out, uh, watch a bunch of videos, download PGNs. But basically the idea of this move First, it looks really weird. I'm just losing the yeah. tempo. Uh, but after bishop a5, for instance, castles knight g7, after the move d4, it it looks like black just kind of surrendered the center. Right. And after pawn takes, here she realized something went wrong. Because after c takes d, this bishop on a5 is quite useful. And I believe a couple of Magnus Magnus's games went like this. So e5 allows bishop g4 kind of pin and if pawn takes queen takes and now the power of this bishop can be seen there's no knight c3 because i can take and no rook e1 and so i'm just playing against knight qp in a very comfortable position yeah i mean your queen can always go to like h5 queen can go to h5 and yeah so again for more uh analysis if you want to try this out check out my website but she played uh kind of a surprising move to me so instead of pawn takes d4 she played knight takes d4 and now I don't think black has any problems because this pawn on c3 is stopping development of this knight. It's unclear why white went for the setup and my bishop can go to b6, which is just a normal position. 
And also the knight on e7 gives me the flexibility to push my f pawn, mm -hmm. which uh, was quite w w vital in the game. That's actually how I won the game. Mm. So I castled bishop g5 f6, very important uh, to kick the bishop out. I didn't have to play f6, I can play bishop b6 too, but I like it. She goes here and now bishop b6. Mm -hmm. And here uh, she decided to go for the bind idea, c4. Oh. It's kind of a classical approach to chess, right? If you can secure this d5 outpost, you should. But I, I don't think it works here, guys. But it's an ambitious move, right? Yeah, because the pawn went to c3, now she's going to c4. Although I'm kind of lagging some development. But I think I found a really cool way to stop it. I play d6. Mm -hmm. And now knight c3 runs into a cute problem. Knight e5 with the idea knight g4 and f h3, then a6. And the c-pawn is now weak. Yeah, this bishop really belongs on e2. And that bishop is completely <laughs> misplaced. So yeah. she was thinking, okay, prophylactic thinking. She probably watched my videos. She thinks <laughs> h3. But now there's a second problem with this. I can just trade and play bishop e6. And again, a6 is a big threat. Mm. And that bishop on b5 is just stuck there. I think white is worse after oh, takes yeah. takes. She was really unhappy with her position here. And understandably so. She plays the move that she doesn't want to play. She plays knight d2. Mm -hmm. Now she's not fighting for the d5 outpost for the knight. That bishop on b5 was misplaced. And that f pawn, remember the flexibility of my setup, f5, x clan. And now I'm taking over the initiative because if pawn takes, I can take with the knight. Queen's coming in. Mm -hmm. Knight's coming to h4. And I'm just going to go checkmate the king with the bishop hanging out. Right. Yeah. So she plays here. And I think knight g6 may be a stronger move. Just kind of going after the king quickly, queen g5 or queen h4. I played f4, which is more of a positional squeeze. And this reminds me a little bit of King's Indian structures, right? I was right? Gonna say, yeah, your instincts kicked <laughs> My in. My instincts kicked <laughs> in because now I've got e5, c5, d4 outpost. I have a pawn majority break, um, like g5, h5, g4 on mm -hmm. the king side. And in general, she doesn't really have any counterplay. Uh, funny enough, the open, the half open a file came in useful as well in the game. Yeah. So let me kind of walk you through the steps, how I'm going to get my pieces set up. So first things first, she's threatening the move c5. Mm -hmm. So I have to get my king out. Then um, I want to get my knight to c6. And automatically I'm threatening, if she plays knight d4, I'm threatening this takes, takes, and f3 mm -hmm. with a really strong attack. Yeah. So she can't even trade the knight. So she plays this move, which does allow me to execute my idea. Queen f6, stopping in knight d4. Should try to get the rook in. And now this is my favorite I, uh, part of the game, bishop f7. Oh, nice. And there is no stopping bishop h5. And I basically secured all the outposts. Yeah. So here, and now I really like my next move, rook a5. Right. The rook can swing over and protect the bishop. And now I, I'm just dominating. Uh, here is the critical moment where I think I slipped a little bit. I played this logical move, rook g5. Oh, like wrist check. <laughs> But yes, I think it allows this bishop swap. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, the game that Kosti is referring to is today was the candidates tournament, uh, round one, that Grishuk got his rook trapped with a little bit too ambitious play against Kramnik right. in a normal position. So I'm definitely playing it a little bit better than Grishuk because my rook's not getting <laughs> trapped, but still the strategic idea for white is to trade those bishops. I am allowing that. Yeah. So I think uh, it would have been a little bit better to play either queen h4 just kind of for an attack or very simple move queen g6 which i did see i was a little bit worried about this g4 move but honestly i can just take in queen e8 and this e pawn is really weak right so maybe i should have gone for this instead because now bishop d1 doesn't work a2 is hanging mm -hmm. um and if she plays f3 here then it's a better version than the game right so if f3 you know i have uh oops if f3 i can just play queen Queen somewhere, queen g5, queen queen f6, yeah. and just kind of do the pawn store. Right. Anyways, uh, just a small uh, inaccuracy in my end that allowed the bishop trade, but still I force her to weaken those dark squares even more. Mm -hmm. And now it's gonna be a long game because now white doesn't have any kind of immediate problems. It's kind of a long term way for me to break through. Right. So I played h5 to just stop any knight moves, and now. Temporarily, I can't break through on the king side, so I've got to create a second weakness, so I start targeting those other pawns. So I played this. So she's got a maneuvering around, maneuvering around. I'm targeting the c pawn, trying to provoke more weaknesses. 
and here she plays rook d5. So more or less she is defending quite well. And here I could have played maybe c6, give up the d-pawn, but win the c-pawn. So it's a little double-edged, but I think black is still better. I decided to just bring my king a little bit closer. She starts to activate the knight. Here comes my queen, knight b1, queen h4. Notice how the knight left the king side. Now I'm going to attack the king side because the knight <laughs> can <laughs> protect everything. Yeah. She goes back, queen here, b3 here, here takes take. She tries to play, uh, you know, with counterplay with this b4, but I think a4 is safer. Yeah, just b4 kind of, looks really weakening. Yeah, just kind of holding the fort. But obviously I'm going to break through with g4 at the right moment. Mm -hmm. But this gives me a second weakness, this pawn on a3. And I think this end game is just lost. I played here, here. Here I actually could have played this cute idea, c6, to trap the rook. Oh, nice. And knight d7. But yeah. okay, she has to sack the exchange, maybe she can fight on. But I, I really like what I did, very simple, straightforward plan. Here I play rook a7. By the way, if she plays king e2, there's a really cute trap. Can you guys find the trap? If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. And the trap is c6. Yeah, just same thing, right? Same concept, but the rook steal is on e8, and this guy is totally mm -hmm. trapped. Yeah. So she obviously saw this, she goes back. And now, guys, in the end game, what's the most important thing? The king. You yeah. gotta get the king to e6. <laughs> so here walks my king, little by little. Now my king is where it's supposed to be. Activate the rook. And now I really like this part of the game. She's going for some counterplay. I'm not gonna allow it. C6. Yeah. yeah. And now I've got my ideal position. My king is in the center. There's no kind of counterplay. It's time to break through. And I played probably one of my favorite moves as well here, rook h8. Because mm -hmm. g4 is unstoppable, I'm going to win the h file. Nice, and you want your second rook in too. Yep, and here comes my second rook, rook to g8. So now everything is collapsing here. Rook h1 is a threat, rook takes g4, king c2 is going to lose the c-pawn. So this is just game over. Wow, yeah, this um, is lost. And she actually tried to, you know, play on, but I think this is just easy win. I'm going to win a pawn. And now my pawns are going to hold hands <laughs> and just start walking. King e5. Yeah. And I don't even care about the king side at this moment, guys. Here just come my pawns. And she resigned here. Oh, so pretty easy win. Um, you know, I got a great possession out of the opening. She didn't know the line. Yeah. And uh, I really like the strategic ideas in this game, how I used the dark squares and then played on both sides using the principle of two weaknesses. Yeah, it was a very good like in-game grind. Yep, so relatively easy game. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna play Grandmaster from France and you're gonna play... Uh, Elshan. Elshan, so that's gonna be from the US. two Grandmasters tomorrow for us. Yeah. All right, well, we'll be back with more uh, postmortems tomorrow. And uh, once again, guys, if you liked the video, you should let us know in the comments or better, send it to other chess players that might like the video too because you'd be doing them a favor and us a favor. All, All right. right, thanks guys. <laughs> Good night.